Hello, welcome to Conversations from the Couch. I am Leah Brick, Executive Director for SASH, and today I'm here with Kat, with Kat Etherington for our conversation to talk about her session for the annual conference. Kat, welcome. So glad to see you today. Thanks, Leah. It's lovely to be with you. So we're going to be talking about your session that's coming up, Forgiveness After Betrayal. It's on Saturday, October 17th at 6 a.m. Central Time, which will be a little bit tough for some of our audience because that's pretty early, but it will definitely be uh, pleasurable for you in the UK. That's right. Yeah, that time, that pesky old time difference does cause a problem. <laughs> Well, tell us more about your presentation and what was the inspiration behind your message this year? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting when I when I think about the, the whole concept of forgiveness, part of my motivation and inspiration to talk about that is really comes from the clients that I work with, but also from my colleagues and the conversations that we've had around this topic, because it's such a challenging topic to start to address within the context of betrayal, especially chronic betrayal. And it's, you know, often the, the source of quite a lot of shame for clients who feel like maybe they can't forgive or they're not ready to forgive. And so because I was hearing something a little bit controversial around it, I love a bit of controversy. So I thought I'd love to just know more about that for myself so that I could, first of all, validate the experience of my clients, but also have something to offer them when they come sort of talking about that. So really it's about, it was for me, it was about kind of trying to meet the needs of my clients. But I think it's such a, a good topic too, because so many times we think, betrayal happens and that automatically it leads to divorce and right. you know if there's forgiveness involved maybe the maybe the divorce doesn't happen or the separation doesn't happen or even if it does you still learn to forgive and to move right. on with your life and not carry that resentment right I, and go ahead i was just going to say so many of my clients bring it to me you know it's not that I as a practitioner are saying well really you just need to forgive and kind of get over it although they do hear those messages in some places but actually what I see and my my demographic is mostly betrayed women um, and most of the women that I work with are bringing it up at some point they're asking they you know if they're staying in the relationship they really want to be able to forgive and move past um, and even if they're not they're recognizing they don't want to be carrying those feelings of resentment and bitterness and so really it's it's coming from them most of the time right which is really it's very validating isn't it that they want to forgive and move on and and i heard you say that they're being told you know you need to just get over it and right. i think that's one of the things that's so important to, to for a practitioner and, and for uh people who've been betrayed to understand that you know it's not something you get over quickly and right. that's a that's a really hard message what I was going to ask is why do you think that this topic in particular is so important to sexual health? Well, you know, and again, in the in the context within which I'm working, I'm asking questions about what kind of sexual experience is a person having in in, a, in an encounter with someone who they haven't forgiven for a previous betrayal. You know, there's there's questions for me about the the emotional safety of that and the level of intimacy that you can achieve when you're carrying resentments and um, unforgiven betrayals. Right. So in terms of sexual health I think this really is a question that needs to be addressed and of course it's not black and white like if you're carrying any kind of unforgiveness you can't have a, a healthy sexual encounter but I do think it is an interesting thing to explore within that context so there's a kind of sexual health element to it there's a relational health element to it too. Sure it's all that connection that we have with right. each other and and how do you do that sexually how do you do that uh, just in a relational connection just getting your needs met so it's, it's yeah and like you said with women in my case women whose relationships don't survive a betrayal what does that mean for any future relational or sexual health encounters for them are they are they gonna carry those scars into other relationships and how is that going to impact the sexual health within that context and their own sexual health, right? So their own relationship with right. themselves and what that means for them in relation yeah. to how they view their bodies and and 
you know, what are they saying about themselves? So it, to me, it's, it's, it's such a large topic right. to deal with. What do you hope that the audience comes away with from your presentation? Well, you know, what, what I got from the research that I started to do around this topic was, well, first of all, there is a ton of really fascinating research around the topic of forgiveness. So, you know, what I can offer in a short presentation is just a little uh, nugget in comparison to what could be found out there. But I tried to pull out the pieces that felt most salient in terms of my demographic. Um, and what I got from that process was just a real sense of having something a little bit more tangible than maybe my own experience or the experience of my clients to point to to say actually here's what the research is telling us and and therefore to offer really tangible validation to my clients to meet them right where they are and so I hope that other professionals and indeed people engaged in their own process are going to feel that sense of having something bigger to to point to and to anchor into that they can really start to understand the research and therefore be informed in their practice. Right, because this is a relatively new field. I mean, right. the trail is not new, but people are now beginning to name it for what it is. And so there, there can't be a whole lot of research out there mm. relative to betrayal trauma. Certainly plenty of research around trauma, but, but right. specific to betrayal. So those are really important pieces to bring forward. And I tried to take the research and contextualize it in that way, because again, the research is broad. You, you know, a lot of the research around forgiveness is even based on things like customer um, customer service encounters and those kinds of things. So what, I, what I've tried to do is take what the research demonstrates as overall principles and then apply them into what does it look like in a betrayal or trauma context so I hope they'll take that away too that makes really good sense this isn't you're not new to sash and this isn't your first time presenting so is there something in particular that you're excited about this year relative to the sash conference and and mm. of course we're going virtual so that's all new Right. Um, so I'm really excited to be in in a, you know, this virtual climate as much as it comes with losses. And, you know, one of the things I shall miss most about Sash this year is not getting to meet people in person and have that kind of 3D experience. But at the same time, an obvious advantage to that as a as a Brit is that I don't have to travel across an ocean to be with you guys. Um, and I, you know, I can see a huge benefit for people who perhaps otherwise wouldn't get to engage with Sash to be able to show up and hear and learn and um, so I'm, I'm really excited that some of my clients here in the UK and in Europe will get to engage with Sash for the very first time and that some of my colleagues who you know perhaps wouldn't want to make that trip or wouldn't be able to make that trip will also get you know when I come to Sash I'm just soaking up the the learning and the education and so um, I love that some some of my colleagues will get that opportunity too. Yeah, that's, that's a huge benefit this yeah. year that, that we're online. What other benefits have you gotten from the virtual environment? We've been in this now for a number of months. Are there, there benefits to your practice or to your life that you've been able to derive from being virtual? Yeah, so really in the work that I do, um, all of our client work is online. So, um, you know, part of um, the vision that we had for the services we operate at Naked Truth Recovery was almost like a reverse engineering of those things that make things like pornography um, so successful. So the affordability, the anonymity, and the accessibility. And of course, being virtual helps us to provide support services for those kinds of issues. That is all of those three things. So, so we love the, the way that the operating virtually connects people. Um, and so our programs are literally global you know we've got clients down in uh, in Australia um, often who are in tomorrow's time zone and then we've got clients over in the US who are a little bit behind us and we're all operating this in this virtual space that connects us you know the world is a much smaller place isn't it when you have zoom and other types of technology to use so so I think it's it's huge so you are not new to this world uh, it's clear. It's it's something that you've been doing for a while, but a lot of us are. So can you help us with 
maybe some of the pieces uh, that that you use to bring peace and balance to being virtual all the time. And while it has lots of benefits, it also can be pretty tiring to be in front of a screen. So what do you do or what do you recommend to bring that peace and balance? Yeah, good question, because balance is is often elusive. Every time I think I find it, I find that I'm out of balance. But, um, you know, I will say this, when I first started running groups online, I remember the first ever group that I did. And I remember having this kind of physical feeling afterwards that I just needed to be outside and I needed to stretch. Um, like I can remember feeling like I need to take up some space um, because, you know, you sit in your chair and you can often get quite constricted. So getting outside, even just to go stand on the front step for me and, you know, spread my arms out and take up space has been really important. Um, the other thing that I couldn't live without in this virtual world is my little dog, um, Benji, who kind of of, you know he, he he's not always um a really helpful person to have around because he'll scratch at the door when I'm on on client sessions and stuff but in between sessions when I you know open my office door and I go out out there he's always really pleased to see me and it gives me that kind of sense of tactile engagement that I can I can touch him in real life and have that 3D effect so um so those are probably for me the two most important things staying hydrated you know taking care of my posture my daughter just bought me a, a shoulder massaging machine that I sometimes use in between sessions too but I think getting up out of my chair is the one thing I couldn't do without it would be so easy to sit here for seven hours or eight hours straight I can really appreciate that uh, I didn't think about what you said about get outside and take up some space there are some days when maybe I don't even get a thousand steps in because I've been in this chair so long. And, and I really appreciate <laughs> your, your comment about the dog. You can't see it, but my little dog's bed is right here <laughs> below my, my desk. And sometimes when I'm in a Zoom meeting, someone will ask, what is that noise? And it's my dog <laughs> snoring. So That's funny. I, I, I love my, my pets as well. Well, I just want to thank you so much for being with us today and remind people that you are on Saturday, October 17th at 6 a.m. Central, which is a very good UK time midday. Yeah. Uh, forgiveness after betrayal. So thank you again for being with us and we look forward to seeing you on the 17th. Thank you for having me. I can't wait.